Hi everyone, it's Alice and welcome to this reading vlog where I will finally be reading If We Were Villains by ML Rio. I have had this book for years and I just feel like it's finally time. You may have heard of this book, it's quite a popular dark academia book, it's one of the quintessential ones. I feel like it's like this and the secret history that are <laughs> on the top of everyone's dark academia book lists and The Secret History is one of my all-time favorite books and because it's one of my favorite books a lot of people recommend me this because apparently it's somewhat similar and it has some of the same themes and vibes. I feel like autumn is the time to read this book so I'm finally going to do it and I'm very intrigued. It's one of those books that I've put off for a while because I am so sure I'm gonna love it, which can be a little bit of a dangerous thing to go into a book with, but because the story just sounds exactly like the kind of story that I like and I do love dark academia books, I think this is gonna be great. The story seems to have a lot of elements to it that I really like. There's a mystery, but the mystery is also structured in a way where you know that something bad has happened and then you sort of go back in time to find out how everyone got there. I think that's a great way of structuring a story. That's how the secret history is structured. So I'm interested in that. And then I love a good college setting. I love reading about friend groups and I just love anything to do with like Shakespeare and stories. I think that's great. And I just think this is gonna be very, very good. This is also a book that a lot of people love and from what I can tell, a lot of the people that love this book like a lot of other books that I like, which makes me think that I have a good shot with this and yeah, I'm a little nervous but mostly just very excited. I'm gonna take you along with me as I make my way through this. I just feel like it's such a great fall read, like it's just, it has the right vibes. So I love that because I love fall, so very excited to start this. Before we go though, I wanted to do a little unboxing, I guess. I got a package the other day that I'm very excited about. I've been holding off opening it because I wanted to open it with you all just because I just like watching unboxings and I'm really excited about what I got and I wanted to show you. It doesn't have anything to do with the book, but it is very autumnal. Before we open this up, I just wanted to appreciate this little wax seal that's on the package. Little things like these I just love and it's quite... I feel like it happens more often with like small business owners and... It's just a nice little touch. So the package is from a company called Midsummer Child, which is an independent candle company. This is their business card. And I found them on Instagram and I saw that they were coming out with an autumn collection and I got sucked in, so I ordered myself some autumn candles. This is packaged really nicely, by the way. We have this business card. We have a thank you note, which is always nice. And then this, which is how to take care of your candles and candle safety, which is quite important. And then I got some tea, which is really sweet. The main attraction though is of course the candles. I can't wait to see what they look like and what they smell like. First we have this smaller candle, which again, it's really nicely packaged and it's the pumpkin patch candle, which of course I just had to get because it is in fact pumpkin season. I love the little label, it's really nicely done and it has a lid, which I love. And to be honest, pumpkins are not a huge thing here, but it's still an autumn thing. And I don't know if I really know what pumpkin is supposed to smell like, but whatever this smells like, it smells really nice, kind of like sweet. I can't wait to burn this. It's a really sweet little candle. And then I think the two other ones that I got are full size. So this one is their Dead Poets candle, which I'm... I feel like I read that it was inspired by Dead Poets Society. Maybe. I don't really know, but it's very... 
Like there's something about Dead Poets that is quite autumnal and this kind of smells like caramel but also something a little spicy. Really good. Lastly, we have another full-sized candle. I think this is called like autumn something. Yeah, autumn leaves. This kind of smells a little bit less sweet than the others. It has a more earthy scent to it and it does smell like walking through a forest in the fall and like autumn leaves. I love that. I love all kinds of candle scents really. It's pretty rare that I find something that I don't like, but this smells really earthy and very autumnal. I can't wait to start burning these. Like my apartment is gonna smell so good. So I've now made it through act one of this book. It's split into acts instead of parts. I'm assuming there are gonna be three acts. I think that's what is usually in a play. I don't really know, but I've read the first act or the first part and so far, so good. The book starts with a scene where a detective visits this man in jail who has just been like, he's going to be released from the jail and the detective goes to see him and he asks him what actually happened back then like something happened like he's in jail but it's pretty clear that maybe the whole story has not been told and the detective is retiring and so he's like i'm retiring i'm not gonna do anything i just want to know what happened back then. The man agrees, he is the main character, I guess, or the person whose like perspective we see the whole story from, and then we return like back in the day to his fourth year of this very like elite, ex exclusive, kind of like odd and eclectic college or university, and it's about his fourth year, which he spent with his group of friends. They're like seven people and they are the only fourth year students in like the actor or like acting theater part. And the school is really weird. It seems like it doesn't really hand out degrees in the traditional sense. And every year they just cut students out. <laughs> So if you've gotten into the school for the first year, you might not make it all the way to the fourth year. But these seven people have made it to the fourth year and they're like this little friend group. There's a lot of different dynamics within this group and I thought that we were gonna find out who was gonna die pretty soon, but we haven't found out yet. But we've gotten to a point where there's some very clear tension between some of the characters. And it's kind of interesting because I keep like wondering who's gonna die. I am assuming that it's one of the people in the friend group and I like have my suspicions, but we don't know yet. And I actually kind of like that. I'm liking sort of speculating what's gonna happen. And these characters are very strange in a lot of ways, but it's a very interesting friend group. One of the things I really like is that even though the characters in this group are very eccentric, you can understand why they are that way. They sort of live, it's very clear that this university is sort of like, it's like these people exist in a bubble. And when you do that, you can sort of turn into a specific type of person, I guess, which I guess is the point of the school. And it's made clear that if you do go to the school and you manage to graduate, that's like, you're gonna get in everywhere. It's very exclusive. And it's like, even though you don't get a traditional degree, you get like the best degree there is. Now there are seven people in this friend group that we're following in a way. And then there's also like other people that we meet but I was a little bit apprehensive about the fact that there are seven people because I think that 
when you have that many characters it's very very difficult to do well and I think this is doing a pretty good job. Some of the characters are not like super well explored but they don't need to be because you sort of like when you meet them they're explained in a way where you feel like you know them and it's interesting because in a lot of scenes all of these people are together and they're talking to each other and that can be very difficult to write. Like if you write that many people talking to each other it can get very confusing but it's actually done it in a really good way and a lot of the writing is clearly inspired by like plays and writing plays and it's sort of incorporated into the way that this story is told which I really really like. There's also a lot of Shakespeare in here because that's the only thing that they study at the acting or theater part of the school and there are like these like Shakespeare is very interesting. A lot of it is like totally nuts <laughs> and some of it is like brought into this which I really like. There are like stuff that is straight out of Shakespeare I think and you like read parts of the plays and stuff which I really like. And these people are they are very pretentious in a way. They will like quote Shakespeare to each other sort of unironically but it works. Those are my thoughts so far. I am enjoying it. I can't quite help but compare it to The Secret History, which I know I shouldn't do because it's one of those books that you can't compare to other books. But I actually think that this benefits it in a way. A lot of people lump The Secret History and this together because they're like the main dark academia books and I can sort of see it. And I would say that in the best possible way, this is so far like the secret history light, like the light version of it or the lighter version. I think part of that is the writing in the secret history is quite different and it's like, I don't know, it's just very different. This feels a little bit simpler. It doesn't mean it's bad at all. I really like the writing and I think that to write the way Donna Tartt does, you have to be a really really good writer because it can easily become very very pretentious and I think it's easier to pull off this kind of story with this kind of writing. I don't know how much sense this is making but I don't think anyone can really match up <laughs> to Donna Tartt's writing and so this is a very good alternative. It's just different. It's not worse or better or anything, it's just a little bit different. I think that's a great thing though because The Secret History is not for everyone. I love that book. It might be my favorite book but I understand why people don't like it. It's one of those books that I love but I totally get that people don't get on with but I actually feel like already if I meet someone who doesn't like The Secret History this might be a good alternative to it because it has a lot of the same feel and the same atmosphere and the same vibes without being as heavy. And I mean heavy in a good way. another update before finishing this but then I just kept reading and I kind of forgot about it. So here we are and let's talk about it. So I actually finished this a couple of days ago and the thing is I feel like I have a lot of thoughts about it but I have less thoughts than I thought that I would which is maybe a weird thing but I think I went into this book with a certain expectation and all of my expectations were met except the fact that I thought that maybe it would have more surprises to it. I feel like this was a really enjoyable book. I really liked it. I love these kinds of books like this kind of like dark academia vibe. I just think it's great. I love stories with like friend groups. I love mysteries and there's so much in here that I love and I'm not disappointed but it is exactly what I thought it was going to be and it didn't have a lot more than what I thought it was going to be to it. I think I maybe had a little hope in me that this was going to surprise me and it 
didn't really. Like there are some things that I didn't see coming, of course, but there were also a lot of things that I did see coming. And I think it's one of those books that it's not necessarily predictable, but if you've read a lot of these types of books, you might be able to like pretty quickly <laughs> understand what's going on. One thing that I did find a little bit surprising was the very very end, which if you've read this book, the very last part did take me a little bit by surprise and I don't really know how I feel about that kind of ending. I don't know if I really love it or hate it, I can't make up my mind and it's also one of the reasons that I've like I finished this book a couple of days ago and I didn't do this update until now because I can't figure out <laughs> how to feel about it. I think it's one of those endings that's gonna split opinions and I think that those kinds of endings are interesting and I think I can't think of any better alternative for this story to end if that makes sense so I guess I liked it but I also just I can't completely tell you how I feel about it without spoiling it but I don't know if I always love those kinds of endings but I also don't know how else it could have ended now, to get a little bit into the details of this, the things that I liked the most, like I love the atmosphere and the vibe. I know like the word vibe is used a lot, but it's the perfect way to like explain how I feel about this. I love the, the feeling of it. There is something about these kinds of stories that just really appeal to me. I really like the time period it's set in. It's set in like the late 90s and so there's something sort of nostalgic and nice about that time period that I really like and I feel like I can really picture it. I love the school and the setting. Like, even though it's not necessarily described that much, the descriptions are enough that you can picture how it looks and how it feels. And I love the fact that the school is kind of like, I think one of the characters even mentions it, I think our main character mentions it, that the school is almost like a cult. And I think that's one of the reasons I really like these types of books is that the atmosphere and the the way that these people are is very like cult-like, but it's also in a in a sort of elitist way, so it's academic and it's supposed to be this great thing, but there is also a lot of underlying darkness and unhealthy things there that I think is very interesting and it's not condemned the same way as like other cultish behavior which I think is very interesting. I think the plot is solid. I really liked that we didn't know who was gonna die right away. I did, I think I mentioned that I had a theory and my theory was correct. You can sort of see that part coming but the fact that you can see it coming isn't a negative thing, you can just sort of, like you just know it's gonna happen and it makes it very tense and really good and it's one of those things where like something really horrible happens but it's very, like the reasoning, it's one of those things where you can sort of get it but it is also not the right thing to do but you can see how the characters sort of get there and you can in a way understand their reasoning for doing the things that they're doing. This is very vague because I don't want to give it away but I like those sort of like ambiguous situations where everything is just gray. There's no black or white really, everything is just up in the air and you don't really know what the right decision is. So that's a part of the mystery, but after we find out who dies, there is also the mystery of figuring out what actually happened because they don't know right away and it takes our main character some time to figure it out. And you also, along the way, feel like he's not entirely a reliable narrator and he like mentions the fact that maybe he's not telling the entire truth, which makes you question everything and I really like that. I didn't realize like what had actually happened until the end and so I really like that as well. I think the plot is pretty strong actually. Now the characters I have a lot of thoughts and feelings about and I can't quite <laughs> figure them out really but we have this group of seven people which I mentioned that's a lot of characters to have in one group and then 
I really, like I think it was done well in the sense that when these people are having conversations, it's written in a way where it actually makes sense. And I really like that because it can get confusing sometimes. I do think that not all of the characters in this group are like super well explored. We are introduced to them and I think that the way they're introduced gives you a sense of them. And I really liked that it didn't take a lot of sort of, it didn't take a lot of sentences for us to understand what kind of people they are. But a lot of them just stay that way and are not explored that much more. Which I guess in a way makes sense because we're seeing everything through the eyes of this one character who is not necessarily the most observant person and again he can be a little bit unreliable and there are things that he sees that maybe he doesn't understand right away but I do think that like this is a very close-knit group and I don't feel like all of the like they're supposed to be really close and sometimes I didn't feel like I understood why they were so close except the fact that they're in this like cult-ish school which I guess is maybe enough. I think maybe more could have been done with the characters though. It is difficult to like fully explore all seven of them but I can think of at least two of the characters in the group that I thought were interesting but they were not like explored at all and when I'm thinking about it they are a little bit one-dimensional and maybe it's even more than two. Like there is something about the characters that you're sort of held at a distance from in a way and I don't always love that. I think I just would have liked to know more about all of them because I think that the basis of them are really interesting and the way that we were introduced to them made me feel like I wanted to really get to know them and that we didn't get to know all of them. I still stand by the fact that this is like the secret history light. <laughs> I think that explains the writing pretty well. I mentioned the writing quite a lot earlier and I stand by all of what I said then. I think the writing in the- like I can't help but compare this to the secret history. I noticed this when I was reading it that I just couldn't help myself and I think that that's maybe not the greatest thing but then this is also very similar to the secret history and you can see a lot of resemblances especially in like the atmosphere but also in a lot of the characters actually and I think that this is just like a lighter version of it and it is a little bit different but it is also very very similar. I think for me I lean more towards the secret history kind of writing than this kind of writing although I do think this writing is very good it's just less like I think there could have been more I guess I don't know how to explain this really but maybe if this book was actually and I very rarely feel this way maybe if this book was a little bit longer I would have liked it even better if the language was a little bit more there was a little bit more to it that being said there are a lot of parts in this where i reread what i just read because i thought it was so good but not all of it feels that way it's very difficult to explain i think it's really really good but i it's not like peak writing for me all of this is just preferences though which is why i find it a little bit difficult to talk about because i think that the writing is like objectively pretty good and so there's nothing wrong with it really it's just what you like and there's nothing i dislike about it i just sometimes i read books and i like read the writing and i'm just like oh my god this is amazing like this writing is fantastic and i didn't feel that way about this book necessarily only in small parts and i actually felt more that towards the end than the beginning which is interesting so maybe i got more into the writing as we went along for me this is a very very solid four star book i really liked it it's a book that i think i'm going to recommend a lot it's a book i would recommend if you didn't get on with the secret history but you like those kinds of stories i think this is a very good 
alternative in a way. There are different books, obviously, and I realize that I'm comparing them a lot, but it's very difficult not to. But I think it's very solid. It's an interesting story, and I really, really liked it. It's just not a five-star read for me, and I think if I had read this like five years ago, I would have maybe given it five stars. I'm very, like apprehensive to hand out five stars these days so maybe this is just like a me issue but it's not perfect i don't think five star books need to be perfect i've given five stars to books that i like don't think are <laughs> even that like they're not for everyone but i just love them so much and i enjoyed them so much that i gave them five stars so five stars can be a lot of different things but for me this is a pretty solid four star book. I think maybe the reason that it's not a five star book for me is that although I think it's a good book and I like so many things in it, it's not necessarily the kind of book that's gonna stick with me. In a lot of books that I, like my five star reads, there are certain things where I'll read it and I'll be like, this is gonna like stick in my brain box. And I don't think I had any moments of that with this, which I'm maybe a little bit disappointed by, but I think I think it met my expectations, but it didn't exceed them. And although I think it's a very interesting story and there's so many things about it that I love, if I like if you ask me a year from now any details about this book, I don't know if it's gonna like if I'm gonna remember it. And that doesn't mean that the book is forgettable necessarily, I think maybe the issue is me and <laughs> being very good at forgetting the plots of books. And this can happen with even my favorite books, like I'll tell someone that this is my favorite book, you should read it, and they'll ask me something about it and I'm like, I don't know. But I know the feeling that it gave me and that's what like makes it a favorite book and I don't know if this really made me feel that much except that I just enjoyed it when I was in it. This is getting very rambly though and this is what I mean by not quite knowing, like I feel like I have a lot of thoughts about this book but also I don't at the same time. It's a little bit confusing but those are my thoughts at this point and I'm really glad I finally read this. It was I'm glad I vlogged it as well because it made me think more about the book when I was reading it and I'm glad to have finally read it. I think it's a book I'm gonna recommend a lot, which is cool. I love finding those kinds of books. And yeah, it only took me like four years. I think I bought this four years ago to read it and now I finally have. And that is a very good feeling. <laughs> that is gonna be it for me today though. Now I would love to know all of your thoughts on this book. Please tell me. I think reading other people's like viewpoints and opinions and perspectives on this is gonna help me figure out what I really think and feel about it. So please, please, if you have read this, let me know what you thought, like as many details as you can. I would love to hear all about it. And if you haven't read it, I would love to know if you want to. I do recommend it if you like these kinds of books. So, you know, maybe give it a go if it's your kind of book. I also do understand why people don't like these kinds of books though. There are a lot of, there's, Something about these books that I understand don't appeal to everyone, but if it does, I would really recommend this and yeah, just tell me all of your thoughts and as always, thank you very much for hanging out with me today and I will see you soon. Bye!